to teach because then you really pay attention to what you're learning. And we've been hearing for weeks now from pretty much everyone who comes up here and speaks, whether it's Jonata, Luigi, Roberta, you know, whoever is coming up here, one way or another is asking us to question our beliefs, question our thoughts, question everything you believe in. But sometimes we're told to do something or something is recommended, but we don't really know what that means. We understand it conceptually. We understand theory. Yes, I understand. Yes, the concept, questioning our beliefs. But when it comes down to a belief that is limiting or a belief that's not helpful, do we know how to question it? Do we know? I would say most of us don't. This is actually one of the primary purposes of therapists of cognitive behavioral therapy, right? Is you help clients identify their limiting beliefs, help clients walk through the process of uh, questioning those limiting beliefs and finding out if there are alternate beliefs that could help them meet their goals. So I've done some study on this, and I'd like to share with you um, what I've been learning. So the first question for us is, what are beliefs? Right? What, what are beliefs? And you know, according to the dictionary, it's ideas that we hold to be true. But most importantly, you see this picture of a bridge. Beliefs underpin everything that we do. They're the supports for everything that we think. They're the supports for every decision that we make. And they are the supports and the foundation of everything we do. So think about that. Your beliefs kind of run the show. Right? Everything you think, everything you do, everything you decide, and everything you feel. That makes belief pretty important. Right? So, so now it's, I think, a pretty good question for us to be asking. The question for us is, can we question our beliefs? And if we can, how do we do that? Right? So, if we engage in this course of inquiry, I think the next question we have to ask is, well, where do our beliefs come from? So I'll ask you all that. Where do our beliefs come from? Society. Society, okay, agreed. Where else? Parents. Parents, okay, where else? The Ouija. The Ouija. <laughs> actually, I, actually, hold on, who said the Ouija? Who said the Ouija? You know what, I actually have Luigi's name up here. <coughs> Keep going. Where else? The Ouija, parents, society, where else? Community, friends. Where? Community. Community, friends. What did you say in the back? Advertising. Advertising. So, you know what? Ever. Yep, so our parents, yes. So, who, who, what's one belief you have that came from your parents? Anybody? Just name one thing. Your parents taught you that you still believe. If you do something wrong, you pay back three times. <laughs> <laughs> you pay back three times. Yeah. Okay. All right. Not wrong for the order, wrong for my parents, you know. Okay. <laughs> Any other, what else? Anything else your parents taught you that you still believe today? Stealing. Stealing is bad. Okay. What else? What'd you say? Be honest. Be honest. Okay. Yeah. Now, these don't sound like bad beliefs. They don't sound limiting, right? So, also our beliefs come from our experiences, right? And our experiments, right? We try something new, we get a result, and then the result becomes the belief even if we try only once. We have an experience because of a situation, and then we believe that every time we have that situation, we'll have that experience. Right? This is also, here's Luigi, charismatic individuals. Right? If anyone has charisma and they strongly believe what they're saying, it becomes very easy to believe them. That's real. That's real. And Luigi is not the only one. There are many charismatic individuals that are, oh my goodness, what is the cutest little puppy that just came in? No, please don't be, I love, I absolutely love dogs, and that is the cutest little thing I've ever seen, my goodness. All good. So charismatic individuals, we don't like to admit this, but uh, many of our beliefs come from charismatic individuals. And when I say a charismatic individual, everybody know what I mean? I mean, someone with charisma, someone with a, a booming voice that's very confident and um, is very well learned and very well read and very well spoken, someone that we like and respect and that we have, that has, con has demonstrated that they make sense. But does every single thing they say or do, should that be a belief? 
I'm not gonna make that judgment, but this is one of the sources of belief. This is according to research. This is not my, this, oops, hey, I found the microphone. This is not my personal opinion. Also, as you said society, cultural and societal norms, right? So what's an example of a cultural or societal norm that we've turned into a belief? Anybody? Like, let's just start examining our beliefs for a quick second. What does society teach us that we still believe? Um, to grow, like, that we have to always compete with each other. Oh, That's we have to compete one. with each yeah. other. If you don't compete, you don't exist. <laughs> mm, big. What else? I agree. What does society teach us that we believe and we still believe? This is where nobody wants to admit it, right? How much of our beliefs actually come from outside of us or come from other things? Some of these beliefs are small, like it's rude not to say hello, or, um, or if, if someone drives in, um, erratically in traffic, that they are stupid, or, I mean, there's a, if we start really examining all of the societal and cultural and societal norms, we have a lot that we've absorbed that we haven't questioned. If we can't even identify them, then that is a clear evidence we haven't questioned them. There's just so many things that think of, like, Catholic, pick, pick one, pick one. Church, like, we can go inside, with inappropriate clothing, and what mm. is that? That's mm. for me, because... Mm -hmm. Yes, so churches, so, um, so houses of worship require a certain type of clothing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. But I love what you said, there's so many it's hard to identify. Yeah, because I grew up as a Catholic girl, right? And in Brazil, I remember like, I went to visit a church, and God was like, I, I had swords. Not not an appropriate but I had shorts. They're like, no, you can't go in. I'm like, why? Because you have shorts. I'm like, well, I was like, okay, you know, but I'm thinking, but I, it's like that in Muslim and like in different mm -hmm. cultures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's norms. There's norms. Mm -hmm. A norm in and of itself is a belief about how we should show up, what we should look like, what we should say, what we should do. There's a lot here to unpack, just in societal and cultural norms alone, and. Uh -huh. Now, if you think about it, it's everything is everything. It is and everything. There's no escape from anything because everything is judgment, everything is human perception, everything is made by us and living by the society. That's how it's born, that, that's how it's going to be. Everything is. That's how it's been, yes. I 100% I, I agree, and the reason why I agree is because according to the research, beliefs support our thoughts, our decisions, our feelings, and our actions. That's pretty much everything. Pretty much everything. So you, exactly what you said, Carla, that's beliefs underscore everything, which is why I would like to think that many of us are here for transformation, right? We're here to t transform something. We're here because we don't feel good, we want to feel better. We're not doing well, we want to do better. We are not um, at the evolutionary stage we want to be at. We want to evolve higher. For in general, we're not here to not feel good. We're not here to not change. I think everyone's here seeking something, right? Seeking some shift on, in our thinking, in our decisions, in our feelings, or our actions. Well, in order to do that, we do have to at least start identifying what we believe as a step to changing it, right? So we talk about our beliefs come from parents, experiments, Luigi <laughs> and Yonata, um, cultural and societal norms, also our education. Anyone who's ever had a formal education, you're taught what to believe in school. And if you don't question it, they, it rolls into the, this belief system, as Carl said, that is in everything. Also the media, someone said the media, I think, it, I think Ter Terrence, maybe it was Terrence, who said the news, right? Yeah, the media. If you're exposed to repeated messaging over and over and over and over and over and over, and you don't have the opportunity to dialogue with that messaging, it, it lodges in. Where else? Where else do our beliefs come from? This Tradition. is the question. Hmm? Tradition, Santa Claus, Earth Yeah, tradition. Yes, yes. Tradition. Say what? Religion. 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 If you Google beliefs, the first thing that's going to come is a bunch of religion. It starts there. It's not even on this list, 100%. So we're being provided all of these opportunities to be on the receiving end of what all these other people think we should believe. Just want to let that sink in again. All of these things 
except for these two, personal experience and experiments. Other than that, everything else is from other people. And if we haven't even thought through the source of our beliefs and how important our beliefs are, that doesn't put us in the best position to question them. But we will have a position to question from, especially if we start thinking about what some of the categories of beliefs are, this will help us understand. So the first is limiting beliefs, and I know our therapists in the room would agree with this definition, right? These are opinions that we hold to be true that hold us back from transformation. And then often they're core beliefs, right? And so what is a core belief? These are central, often unshakable convictions that shape how we understand ourselves, others, and the world. Understand this, central, often unshakable. And our belief systems are a structured set of beliefs held by an individual or a group. That's it, the, the beliefs in, in collection, in, collective, in collectivity. Here's the thing. Beliefs do not require evidence. Notice that it says limiting beliefs are opinions. None of our beliefs have gone through an evidentiary validation process. If any of you have taken any of your beliefs and put it through an evidentiary process, I would love to hear that. We don't do that. We accept them, we act from them, we feel from them, we think from them, we decide from them, we treat others from them, we judge others from them, we judge ourselves from them, we say stuff from them. But we're being told week after week here by a lot of different charismatic individuals, we need to question our beliefs. So. Why should we do it besides the fact that Luigi said so? <laughs> why should we question our beliefs? I'm going to ask you all, why should, why should we do this? Besides the fact that we keep being told to do it. Well, you just said it, but there's no evidence of what the beliefs is right or wrong. Okay, we should question our beliefs because they're not based on evidence. And then I no, 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 I, I'm loving it. I, we, we, the, question them because an evidentiary process would make the belief from an opinion into something that's true. I, I'm with you. I'm 100% with you. Okay, what else? I, like, it needed to know exactly if it, it, like if we were taking everybody's like, you know, belief of them taking show as our own, how we, we need to find out exactly what do we believe that belong to us, not so that that's actually what we base ourselves on. Yes, I love that. So ev everything you said is so far is true. To, to um, question them, to take them through an evidentiary process, Make sure that what we believe is what we actually believe and not. Let me give you an example of, of what this, this is just a totally random example. So y'all can see I'm pretty tall, right? And I'm wearing heels. So it, with heels, I'm like 6'2". And one of the kind of societal norms in America is that tall women do not date short men. This is a norm. OK? I'm just going to tell you, it's a norm. But that, that into, uh, what's the name, Tom Cruise started dating the girl, and then it became a more That's important. celebrities. Uh -huh. That's celebrities. I'm talking about in the regular world, oh, yeah. you, don't, you don't see it. And if you do, it's like people stop and stare, and, and they yeah. look. OK? Yeah. This is real. Uh -huh. so, so, so here, so, so I, I, will hum, I will be vulnerable for a moment. So um, several years ago, when I was living in North Carolina, this very short man asked me on a date like probably maybe five feet tall. So he probably came to like maybe like right here on me. And I, I was so flabbergasted, I just said yes. But then when I went home, I said, I should never, that's gonna, oh my gosh, am I gonna be able to wear, this, am I gonna be able to wear heels? What happens if I fall? Is he gonna be able to pick me up? You know, like all these things, right? But then I thought, started thinking to myself, how much of this is really mine? Right, because then I thought, oh, well, you know, is it, um, it you know, will I feel like protected or whatever? I'm like, how many times do I go on a date and somebody mugs us? Like, does that really matter? No. And then I'm like, well, will it look funny? I, I look funny anyway, so that doesn't really matter. Like what, you know, you can't look great to everybody. So I started going through the list of like questioning all these things. What if I fall down, will he be able to pick me up? I'm like, every time I've fallen down, I never needed anyone to pick me up, I got up. Every single reason I had had no basis in how I actually really felt. So I went on the date. 
And it was very awkward. So for example, like walking down, you know, like his hand was not near. I had to, you know, like find the hand to, you know, hold, but it was fine. That was me, nobody cared about that. And you know, he turned into a great friend, right? And we didn't stop dating because he was short. It just wasn't like meant to be. But going through that process, it made me realize so much of what I had absorbed was not even, I didn't feel that, it wasn't true. So I'm just, you know, humbling myself so you can see that. So yes, we, we, we question our beliefs for self-knowledge, to make sure what we believe is really ours. We question our beliefs for empowerment, because of all the people that come see Roberta and souls who serve others like Roberta, because the clinician's work of serving others is a huge lift. It is a deep service to others. You are constantly listening to the limiting beliefs of other people. And when we have limiting beliefs, they strip us of our power. We have no power once we've allowed a limiting belief. Let me give you an example of some limiting beliefs. Um, I'm not good at chess. I'll never find love. I am a horrible public speaker. I, give me a minute, what are some limiting beliefs you hear? I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. That's the underneath, right? So if we think, I'm not good enough, I'm never gonna be able to play chess, I'm never gonna find a good relationship, guess what? If that's what you believe, then everything you do and every decision you make and every thought that you think and everything that you feel is going to come from that. And you know what's probably likely true? That, that's the outcome you're gonna experience. So people pay a lot of money, you know, for those that are willing to go through the process of going to therapy or other ways to try to transform that so that they can be empowered to have the experience that they want. It's also a possibility, because the minute we believe that you can't go to church in shorts, you don't. You don't. You don't. What if those people had said, come on in, my sister. You know, this is, there's something here for you. Right, because at the end of the day, does it matter what you're wearing in a, you know, if, we, if, if God is who God, if, if God is who everyone says God is, your shorts don't matter. How about that? How about that? Your shorts don't matter. What matters more this is how short we are in our willingness to accept in totality our divinity and the divinity of others. That shortness will matter, but not the length of your pants, right? So there's so much possibility that's available to us. And then, of course, is transformation. Because what's possible when we change our beliefs? Anything. Anything is possible. Anything. Anything that you think is not possible right now is, is not possible. But it becomes possible if you question them. But why don't we question our beliefs? I mean, we just sort of did it just now. It's not hard, right? So why don't we do it? What are, what are the barriers? Say that again? Because it's comfortable to be in a comfort zone. It's comfortable to be in the comfort zone, and we're comfortable in our beliefs. Yeah. You almost have to ask yourself to get out of that zone, too, because I, like, my, my encounter with Belief, it was, it, it's funny, because Oprah had a show called Belief, where she went around the world, and she investigated every single religion for mm -hmm. the past 10 years. Mm -hmm. And then after I watched that show, I was like, man, there's so many beliefs of people that believe the, the stars are God, or maybe the tree is God. So all around the world, the beliefs are so different, and we get caught up thinking only our beliefs are right. And mm. I'm like, oh, okay, now I see this very different, because we all have our own beliefs. So we, I think like we have to be willing to hear and accept other people's beliefs and maybe learn from each one of them. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting when we remove ourselves, especially us being Brazilians, right, or Americans. I'm Brazilians when you come here. Like, I was born and raised in Brazil since I was three feet. My beliefs has changed because now I'm here and I'm American. I was like, oh, so, and I, I feel like we should be invited to go around the world and see other people's mm -hmm. beliefs to grow from that. Yeah, yeah, I love what you're saying. And I think what's really powerful about what was just said is that one of the dangers of a rigid belief system is believing that only your beliefs are true. And people who don't believe as you are fad people, dumb people, you know, 
less than people, poor people. That's, there's a, that's a whole danger zone there. So that, yes, so that's, that, that's huge. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. So barriers. First one is something called belief bias. All this is based on research. So belief bias, this is a, whole, a real thing. And this is what we do when we evaluate new information and we only allow it to come in if it aligns with what we already know. So if, for example, you, mama taught you that the stove is hot, right? And so it's a gas stove with fire. So then you buy one of those new glass top stoves, but there's no fire in it. So it's not really like what your mama taught you because your mama taught you that the fire in the stove is hot. But you know that the stove is hot, and you buy this new stove, you know it's for cooking, so it makes sense. You would accept that, even though it's not the fire that your mom taught you. It, it aligns with what you already know. It makes sense, right? You and there's your finger on it anyway, just to make sure. Many of us will do that. <laughs> that is true. That is true. I myself was like, how, how hot is it around two inches from the thing? Yeah, I've been there. Still got the scar. But it's also, you know, as, think about this as spiritists, right? You know, there's lots of... of other, other wisdom out there for us to be learning. Allen Kardec is not the only philosopher, scientist, researcher that has been looking into the nature of the spirit, the soul, the body, of mediumship. Not the only one. Lots of folks out there. Lots of folks out there looking into the nature of life, the nature of creation. There are many people who have channeled many beings that have brought to us all sorts of information. And for those of you that take the time to study some of this material, often, if there's anything whatsoever that conflicts with what we know, we reject it outright. Because this is belief bias. This is, if it doesn't align with what we already know, then we reject it outright. I'm not suggesting that you do anything different. I'm just talking about what belief bias is. Here's the second thing where we run into trouble. It's called belief perseverance. This is when we refuse you get the new information, but you refuse, outright refuse to change, even when you have irrefutable evidence to the contrary. Now, I'm, gonna ask, I'm not going to ask anyone to admit that, but have you ever seen somebody else do that? Yes. You see? <laughs> you present someone with concrete evidence, and they're like, no, 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 no. And you look at them like, what is wrong with this person? So we can see that when other people do it, but do we see it when we do it? Not asking anybody to admit anything. <laughs> it's just some, I'm just putting information out there for us to consider, right? So, but these two things, if you decide you want to question your beliefs, watch out for that. Just notice that these things are happening and you have a choice. That's what we like to call a choice point. That is a point where you make a choice. And you make a choice using your free will whether you want to continue, right? These are choice points. So assuming that you've passed those two and you want to question your beliefs, how can we question them? Well, I can tell you, so I'm an NLP master practitioner. That's Neuro Linguistic Programming. There's a whole body of work. It's a whole science and study of how linguistics in interact with the brain and how that affects decision making and behavior and beliefs. Very complicated field, body of work that um, has its base in Ericksonian hypnosis. There were these two researchers, um, Bandler and Grindler, that, um, that did a whole discovery of how speaking to the mind and the neurolinguistics, um, neurolinguistic exercises that can change beliefs, behaviors, decisions, feelings, and whatnot. I'm not going to share any of that with you today because that's far beyond the scope of a 20 minute lecture, right? But there's actually a simpler way to question your belief, and I bet many of you know about this person. In fact, I'll be surprised if you all do not know who she is. Has anyone heard of Byron Katie? Raise your hand. Byron Katie. One, two, three. Three. OK, cool. That, did you raise your hand, Herato? You know Byron Katie? Yes? You've heard of her? Maybe? OK. So four out of you know how many, how many were here? So Byron Katie is this woman who had an awakening. And she had an awakening, and she's still alive. She had an at least I think she is. She had an awakening that if she believed her thoughts, she suffered. But if she stopped believing her thoughts, she didn't suffer. 
she just had this awakening, like, you know, wh and, and then began to produce this body of work that she tested, and that's what I want to share with you today, right? So she, and then she has a website called thework.com, so all this is from there, I've quoted it. But basically, she has this thing, she calls it the work, right? And, and her invitation is that you can meet your internal wisdom using this method of inquiry, right? And it's a practice that allows you to accept the wisdom that is always exists within you. That's what's beautiful about this, because many, like for example, NLP, it does allow you to access a wisdom that's in you, but you gotta use a lot of complicated steps that are not within you in order to get there. Her stuff is very simple. So, um, so her work is basically, it's four questions. It's just four simple questions that you ask yourself. So what you do is you take a belief, like don't wear shorts to Catholic Church, like, um, you know, uh, what were some of the other beliefs? That if you do something wrong, you pay, if you do something wrong, you pay for it three times, right? Um, or what were some of the limiting beliefs? I'm not good enough. I'll never have good. I'll never have a good relationship, right? I'll never be able to do X, Y, Z. Every single one of us has at least one of those. I'm not asking you to say it out loud. But think about what that thing is right now. Everybody just take a minute. Think about one thing that you think you can't do. Just think about it for a minute. And then I want you to think through, I want you to consider asking yourself these questions. Right? So we question our thoughts, which represent beliefs, and we ask ourselves, is it true? Is it true? Just simple. Is it true? Now, most of us are going to say, well, yeah, I wouldn't believe it if it wasn't true. Almost always the first answer is, well, yeah, of course, because I'm someone that only believes true things. We assume that we've gone through an evidentiary process, even if we haven't, and most of the times we haven't. But it's OK. The first answer is almost always yes. But the second question, can you absolutely know that it's true? We can say, yes, we know. You're not supposed to wear shorts at the Catholic Church because they told you. But can we absolutely know beyond a shadow of a doubt after an evidentiary investigation that can we be 100% sure? No. Can we be 100% sure you're not good enough? No. But suppose the answer was yes. Then her invitation is because sometimes the answer, yes, we really do 100%. We're like we're convicted because we have belief, perseverance, and even in the face of, of, of evidence to the contrary, we're going to hold on. Then her advice is sit with the yes and let that be OK, and then go on to the next question. Here's where it gets interesting. What happens when you believe that's true? How do you react? What's your reality? when you believe it's true. You stop creating your reality from that truth. Yes, you do. And if, if I could use my friend's example here, how did you how did you, you know, how how do you how did you feel when you went to one to go, you were having a spiritual calling, you had a longing. There was something inside you that was longing and searching and seeking when you walked into that church. You wanted to go and you were told no. Cuz your 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 clothing is not funny because I was young, so I was like And I was like, man, I, maybe I shouldn't know better. Mm -hmm. But like, I was walking, I was in a different state this way. So I was mm -hmm. like, man, I would have never thought of that because I know for sure when you go to other churches around the world, I'm pretty sure people, mm -hmm. it's just that one church. But I thought, mm -hmm. like, mm, maybe mm -hmm. I should have known better. Mm. I so I maybe I should have known better. Mm -hmm. So then there was a, um, a, a less than positive feeling about yourself. Yeah. Because the state of maybe I should have known better. Is that how you want to walk around in the world? Maybe I should have known better? Who's ever felt like maybe I should have known better? Ever. OK? All of us. And when we're in, dang, I should have known better. Dang, I should have, I should have known better. Is that a good feeling? Do we walk around like, yes, I should have known better? No, we're like, yeah, I should. And no, it's funny. To this day, when I go to any Catholic church, I'm always like, what am I wearing today? Because like, I have that in my mind now. It's like, now I know better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But think about any limiting belief that we have. How, what, what do you have to feel? What do you have to tell yourself when you believe that it's true? How about, let's think about something that we've been talking about here for several weeks now, which is that we have divinity inside of us. And 
we can ask ourselves, is it true? Now, in our minds, we might say, maybe, right? Because some charismatic individuals have told us that it's true, right? Can you absolutely know that it's true? Maybe not. Maybe not. We don't know. But if we don't think it's true, how do we react? What happens for us if we walk around feeling separate from the most beautiful part of our reality? If we think we're separate, if we think we're less than, one of the biggest limiting beliefs that Roberta talked about that she hears is I'm not good enough. When we think I'm not good enough, is that like, yeah, I'm not good enough, right? Or is it, I'm, I'm not good enough? Who do we have to be when we believe our limiting beliefs are true? So let's stick with I'm not good enough. Has anyone ever felt that? You, I'm not good enough, right? We've all felt that. So you're right if you don't raise your hand, totally fine. But what happens for us when we feel that? Hmm. Anxiety, depression. Stating for the world right now. Exactly, which is how we know it's not you're not the, you're just stating truths that that not everybody wants to own out loud in this moment, but that's true. We've all been in this because think about it. What what the media all the advertising that you see is telling you you're not good enough. Period. And you will be good enough when you buy this, wear this, smell this, drive this, live this. We get bombarded with these messages of not being good enough. But the last question is, who would you be without that thought? Who would you be without that belief? Who would you be if you didn't think you weren't good enough and you thought that you were? Who would you be if you felt like you could wear whatever you wanted to when you went to a spiritual building? Who would you be if you felt like you could do whatever you wanted and that you were creating your reality? What could that be? Remember we talked about why question our beliefs? One of them is possibility. I don't have the answers for you. This is a body of work by Byron Katie that you can consider. Now, we are clo almost close to the end, but I want to show you this. This is from her website. This is the process she recommends because talking through it with a group of people, we're not gonna really be forthcoming with what's really bothering us. You can't really go through the process. But the first thing she recommends is notice what upsets or angers you, right? Notice this, and she recommends doing this with a piece of paper. She's got a little worksheet you can download, but she can just do this on paper. And her thinking is, if you recall a specific situation, um, that the thinking behind this is that painful emotions, right, are bells that wake you up and tell you it's time to do some work, right? And then you write it down. You capture this thought, you know, using short, simple sentences. Because one of the things we do is try to get overly complex and explain all the whys and hows. It's just the what. I don't feel good enough. That's it. I think I'll never be able to play chess. I don't believe God is inside of me. I am not a fast learner. Whatever the limiting belief is that, is, that causes pain for us, right? And then the thing is, her thinking is that once we stop it on paper, because as I ask you the question, you answer, and your mind's already off somewhere else, going, 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 going. But if you stop and you write it down, what she's saying is that this allows some stability so that you can start to inquire. Because it's hard to ask questions of something that is snapped and gone. And that's how our beliefs stay so stationary without any evidentiary investigation whatsoever. So it's writing it down that stops it so that we can interact and have a meaningful inquiry. And then it's this turnaround, right? Well, it's, first it's this question is, after we isolate it, we ask the question because if we don't question, we don't have any opportunity. Questioning is the opening the door. That was that picture of the door before. When we question our beliefs, a door opens. If we do not question, the door of possibility is closed. It is slammed shut with a lock. The door to possibility opens when we start to question. So it is the questioning that opens the door. And then there's this turnaround because it's, yes. Let me just add to it. 
-hmm. when, you, when you say question you and belief, it's not only the negative belief. The positive ones, too. It's all, everything that you choose to believe, right? Everything. So we, and when we talked about earlier is all the different kinds of beliefs that we have. Her work, this, this method, she recommends starting with painful things because that's easier, because it's that, that, that's easier for us to start with. Because our positive beliefs, we, um, her recommendation is get good at questioning your negative beliefs so that you can do the positive one. Because our positive ones are more difficult to question, and the reason is, is because we don't feel that there is a payoff for questioning it. When we question painful beliefs, we believe the payoff is we will feel better. But there's risk, risk in questioning our positive beliefs because we, we risk that the positive beliefs that make us feel good, that we will feel bad without them. So to get good at this, and then you begin to question. Because the point is, and, and I 100% agree, is this to question everything. We led into this, Yonata, before you got here, is that with that we've been saying here over and over for several weeks, question your beliefs, question everything, question everything. We don't have a, a methodology. And the other thing you missed with us saying your name is because we talked about where beliefs come from, and one of the primary places beliefs come from is charismatic people, right? So somebody said Luigi, and then I was like, yeah, and you're not a, right? And then turn it around, right? Find opposites, are they, are they just as true? Is it equally as possible when we say I'm not good enough that we are good enough? Is it equally possible if we say I'm not, I will never be good at chess to be, I could be good at chess if I practice. Is it not equally as possibly true? I mean, given something called uh, mutually exclusive options. So for example, God is either in you or God is not in you. They're mutually exclusive. It either is or it isn't. So that means there's a 50% chance already that it's true. It either is or it isn't. Like, we don't even start out like that. Like, 50%, that's huge odds. Do you know how many investors would invest in a fund if they thought there was a 50% chance of, ma of making a return? There's not an investor on Wall Street that wouldn't snatch that fund and sink a poop ton of money into it. But us? Like, oh. 50 50% chance. I'm just saying. We love money. Do we love the opportunity to feel good? And so the turnaround, it gives consciousness an opportunity to expand. And that's the whole point of this, right? We talk about why do you question your beliefs? Self-knowledge, expansion, possibility, transformation. That's why. I'm going to pause here. So I saw some folks take pictures. This is, um, her website is the thework.com, it's Byron Katie's work. What questions do you have about this process? Oh, keep going? OK. OK. So. If, Luigi said no questions. <laughs> okay, so um, the last two slides then. So I love what she said. And again, this is, you know, we're also studying on our Wednesday night class. Uh, for those of you that don't attend, it's a Wednesday night study every Wednesday night from 7 to 8 p.m. We're studying a book called The Law of One, and it's a lot about respecting free will. So I love what she says here. Freedom is as simple as that, basically the work that I found that suffering is optional. I found a joy within me that has never disappeared, not for a single moment. But here's where the invitation is. That joy is in everyone always. And I invite you not to believe me. I invite you to test it for yourself. Right? And that is, to me, how I can feel that someone is not trying to control me or make me feel that I'm not good enough or not smart enough. Just invite me to test what you're saying. That, to me, feels right. That feels like I'm not being influenced by a charismatic individual. I'm not being told that I'm not good enough unless I believe it. I'm not being told I'll be better if I, you know how we, how we subtly mask you're not good enough, right? Is it, someone invites me to test something? That feels, that feels good, that feels good. So this is the last slide here, and this, I, I love what she says, that the work is a practice. Every time you do the work, you are becoming enlightened to who and what you are, the true nature of being. To question what you believe is an amazing gift you give yourself. And you can have it all the days of your life. The answers are always inside of you, just waiting to be heard. Right? So the invitation, test, question your beliefs. See if it works. Only you will know. And I want to thank you all for listening. If you learned anything of value, please share it with someone, because wealth, if you use it, comes to an end. And learning, if you use it, increases. Thanks, everyone.
cachorro lindo. <laughs> oh, I am answering. You say you say we don't answer questions. Oh, you want me to do the reminder? No, no. Am I answering? Qu no. What? Hold on. I'm being instructed by a charismatic individual what I should believe about this moment. Continue for you to finish all the slides, but now you can ask questions. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Questions? Questions? You always have to ask the you. Is it not the first one? If he can do it, I can do it. You know? So prove yourself that you can do it. That's the thing. Yes. So you mean like the the, qu the four questions okay. that we asked? Yeah, okay. yeah. So those are questions okay. we. Believe in yourself. Yes. If we if if we have beliefs that we want to question, we question them ourselves. We wouldn't question the person that gave right. that is talking about it. We start. The work is inside yeah, of us. Test, test yourself. Test your yes That's yes. Te right. Test what is being shared right. yourself. Right. If you want to. Only if you want Only to. You <laughs> <laughs> yes. Why do you think? Oh, so we actually talked about that. So two, two, th there are only, we only talk about two things. I'd be curious to hear what you all think. But the two biggest things are belief bias, which is we only believe information that aligns with what we already believe. So if you give me something new, I only believe it if it aligns to what I know. And the second one is belief perseverance, where even in the face of overwhelming scientific proof, I refuse to believe you. Refuse. I just. Hold on. I mean, I mean, I'm talking about the actual work. Oh, why do we resist the work? Yeah. Hmm. Why do we resist doing the work? So I have a thought about that, which is that we have perceived benefits to our belief. So if we believe we're not good enough, for example, even if it's a negative belief, that means we don't have to try very hard. That means we can excuse ourselves from serving others. We can excuse ourselves from transforming. We can excuse ourselves from behaving well when we're put on the spot because, hey, we're not very good anyway. right? So I think we have payoffs to our limiting beliefs, and we have perceived payoffs to our so-called positive beliefs. So I think, unconsciously, we are addicted to those payoffs. But that's just my opinion. I do not scientifically tested that. But what do you all think? I'm curious for you all. We are afraid to be wrong. Afraid, afraid to be wrong. Afraid to be wrong. Scared of change. Fear of failure, fear of being wrong, fear of change. So fear. Fear. Fear of losing the benefit. Mm. Fear, so, so fear of discomfort and fear of the unknown. Because it's easier because we know it. Yeah. It's easier because it's, we know. I, 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 uh, when I think about that, I also think that uh, uh, sometimes we resist our belief because we don't know what is going to happen. Yeah, we don't want to take responsibility. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <coughs> that we did. Yep. So fear of the unknown, fear of change, fear of of um, discomfort, fear of being wrong, unwillingness to take responsibility. What else? <sighs> fear of pain. That's probably the number one. That's probably the number one reason. We don't want to change our question our beliefs because we don't want to hurt. Yeah, and most of our beliefs are pretty much designed to protect us from hurting. Yeah, deep. 
should've, I should have started with that. Where were you at the beginning of that? <laughs> <laughs> so, those are some, so those are things we can look at because at the end of the day and at the beginning of the day, we are all part of the same divine creation. So if it's true for you, it's probably true for me. If it's true for me, it's probably true for you. And if it's true for you, true for you is probably true for most of us. So if there's a spark of truth in this for you, then the invitation is question it. Test it, if that feels like something you want to do. And I think that sometimes you can go, you know, against the stream of the average person thinks, which I think is false for me and true for you, is the Holy Spirit. Hmm. And Hundred percent. All righty. Other questions? Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Kara was on fire tonight, huh, people? She was burning. Psst. Smoking hot. <laughs> That's good, you see? Uh, uh, we have wonderful studies here uh, uh, on Wednesday nights, Monday nights, Saturday nights, and uh, it's a good place to be if you don't, you know, if you wanna really open up your mind. So let's go to our reminders. So the spiritual talks, public talks, English, every Wednesday. As you know, we were here. Uh, begin a yoga classes. We're gonna have a yoga class this Saturday. We invite you guys to be here. It's a 9.30 a.m. It is in this room here that we do it, all right? Come in. We don't need any more because we got a lot of them then. Thank you very much for all that they contributed to us. And channel messages, you come in 15 minutes before, ask for your message over there. And uh, you, you, you flew the therapy, your water that you put in there, bring it in. I don't see anything today. You already took it inside? There is no water today? Oh, they're inside? All right, keep it bringing. Is very healthy. And uh, every Thursday night, uh, Fraternal welcome here. Uh, 7 uh, p.m. we have in Portuguese and in English. A wellness program every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. we have a meditation prog uh, program here with different teachers. It's a wonderful program. I'm, uh, I used to come in. I'm not, I can't come in anymore because I'm working late. But uh, when they came in, it made a lot of difference for me because meditating alone at home is one thing, but in here, it's the next level. It's wonderful. But I will come back, okay? And the spiritual surgery every Friday, if you want to book an appointment, it's during the public meetings, English, or Saturday, or Monday. And our, our yard sale is going to be this Saturday, Friday. We need your help to arrange everything at six o'clock here if you want to come in and help us. And then on a Saturday, you also need your help to put everything out and help us sell outside. This is one of the biggest uh, uh, source of uh, financial source from our center is the yard sale and our kitchen. So now I invite you guys to uh, close your eyes. Marcelo, can you lower the lights a little bit? So we make a very So we can clear a mind, leaving everything that happens today and throughout the week outside. So we can focus on us, focus in our heart, put our mind to sleep at this moment, and leave awareness waken so we can connect to each other here connect to the spirituality connect to creation we're very thankful for this night very thankful for everything that we received these tools that we come across in our lives. 
And sometimes we don't give much attention to them because our mind takes us everywhere. And we forget to dip in. We forget to absorb the light teachings that come to us as the source of our soul, as the light that illuminates our path throughout this journey. We are very thankful to receive the light. Very thankful to be here, to have life, to be able to love, to be able to share, to be able to respect and understand everybody the way they are. We are on this path together because we are part of, of a big family a planetary family. And this is our home. So we are also very thankful for our home. And thankful for everyone that continue constructing love, hope, and above all, peace. So with that, we ask permissions to end our lectures and works for tonight. So be it.
Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Of course. Mm-hmm. I'm more than open to it. I just need people that have an open mind. Don't. Like the bossa. Woo! É pau, é pedra, é o fim do caminho. Eu sei. Me dá água na boca. Amor por telepatia Na lua, na melodia Me há de querer de você De tanto a gente se Todas essas músicas velhas são muito bom Testing, testing. Hello. Eu tava escutando uma. Será que não é a pilha? É, acho que testing, é a pilha. Testing, testing. Uhum. The Lord bless you. This color is so pretty, Nadia. When you were watching, I was like, ooh, look at her. <laughs> so pretty. Watching you and Danny together, you're all so newlyweds. You're like, oh hi, mm, and the hold hands and everything is very cute. I said I love watching you and Danny, you and your wife. When like in the study, when she comes in, you mm, and you hold hands and it's very beautiful. <laughs> I like watching that. Love makes me happy. That's when you marry a cancer, <laughs> right, Marcel? Very affectionate. <laughs> No? E ela era câncer também? Fala em fala inglês. Câncer te segue, hein? Oh. Quase todos os namorados que eu já falei, all, almost all the boyfriends that I've had uh, were Leos. Isn't that weird? Really? Yes. Yeah, And you are a <laughs> queen. Yeah. What are you? Libra. Taurus. 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 And my birthday is in a couple weeks, yeah. Oh. I'm weird though. I don't really like fit the Taurus. No, I'm you have the body. The body of a Taurus. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tall, you know, elegant. Okay. Fancy. Okay. Oh, this is good. What element are you? Taurus is what? Earth. Earth. Oh, you Earth, just like him. What are you? He's Earth. a Taurus too. You're a Taurus. What's your birthday? May nine. May nine. Okay. April twenty one. Forty thirty five. Yeah, I'm gonna be forty fifty. Forty. Wait, hold on. Am I supposed to be forty? You forgot your forty fifty seven. I often do. Yeah, it's not a big thing for me. I think I'm fifty seven. I'm fifty six now. I'll I be forgot 57. my age too. You how old? I'll be fifty seven. Wow, you don't look. No, thank you. I'm not a great. Thank you. That's where all that experience is coming Let's from. Let's do remember uh, first. Okay. <coughs> Hello. Hello. There was one thing that uh, 
I noticed mm. that we need to put this microphone closer. Really close. Like this. Start, just go from the, yeah.
What do you think, Marcelo? Very close. A couple more months. Hmm? Yes. No other way, huh? No fat, no pill to take. How's <laughs> it? Anyone want me to start? You will change it, so I'm starting. You are starting <laughs> with your talking voice. One, Very two, soft. three. So One, two. I am the river. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it started a little bit like this. Keep 
Better to choose a song because she didn't choose anything. I'm they supposed cho to choose a song if you want to. Um, I have remember courage. Uh, choose how about that other started. song that I used to sing? Where which was one? It? I don't know the other song that I used to sing. Remember which one? I don't know. I used to sing a song. Let me see which one. Which song was it? The I picked that song. I'm talking about a brand new song. Oh, a brand new song? I'll Would you like it. to have something that you pick to sing? Sure. That's I'll what I was saying. Oh, okay. 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 So we can. St um, so you bring your energy into the yeah. something that you oh. chose. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do God is here and then we lift the other one. I think one. that's the one I was talking about. No? No, maybe not. No, we need new songs. Marcel is right. We need new songs. We I are ready. I'll look into it. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful songs. I'll look into it. It's you, okay? Presence lives. 
supposed to take me somebody's supposed to take me I thought it was you no it's okay oh he left me with a car okay all right okay yeah mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Boa noite. So, remember to pull up, and even if it comes with the darkest night, but only the last of the last oh, time I you go. go. Up. Okay. Night. Oh, okay. Okay. I thought that the you 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 can pull the the night, okay. but the other ones. Okay. No. No. Um, we we keep it here. Okay. It's too different, it needs to be less different. It's, it's too different. Yeah, my my idea everybody my idea is to is to is to go and do not put too much power in here. And never and then only the second the time yeah. we do it. Okay. Should I go higher then? Yeah? Okay, I go higher. God is here. Like oh, that? Oh, okay. he wants you to sing louder. I will. Is that it? I will. Uh, I know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, vamos lá. I'll sing higher. No, go. she wants you to sing my alto. Yeah, I will. Or louder, yeah. Louder. Maybe Not bring higher. my microphone up a little bit. It's too low. Mm -hmm. So I don't have to force my voice so much. Thank you. So I'll sing louder, but it let lower. me let me go. You'll ahead sound ahead. louder. God, see, I feel like it's not. I don't know. God is let here me, uh, let me put at it. this moment. Mm -hmm. Volume, just projection. You say okay. Yeah, it's like it's like less God air. God is here. At this moment, and its presence, like yes. this, okay. Yeah. There's less air. Okay. Yeah, it mm -hmm. sounds good. We got to save that for the last time. Oh, okay. Okay. Which one? The second one or the first? All of them. Oh, last power in all for of them? For now. Because we want to build this song. We wanted to uh, to bring the emotions of, of the song. So in this two here... Um, you say the it first one too, too much no, power? No, 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 oh, you're oh. good on that. Okay. No, to, I'm, uh, I'm talking on about the set, on the on okay. on when me and Kara and you uh, okay. sing together. Okay. The Lord I wanted to see it. Uh, first of all, uh, the way I see it is, the Lord has brought you here. Like, 
first is like a reflection. Okay, so we don't want to go. We want people. We want people to uh, reflect about the possibilities why the Lord has brought them here. Mm -hmm. So I want to with a tone of reflections um, in this uh, first, mm -hmm. and then and even uh, if he comes, it's reassuring. Like and even okay. if he yeah. comes. So okay. this, l okay. if if we understand the emotion, mm -hmm. we put the right tone mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. and then w when we come to the end here, that I was gonna joy cut it here, and you come at only, oh whoa whoa, oh. not is not a reflection more. Now here okay. it's an affirmation. It's affirmation. The Lord has brought right. you here, okay, mm -hmm. to alleviate. Okay. So you change the emotion from one side to the next mm -hmm. one. Okay. Got it? Mm -hmm. So reflection uh, here, and then when it comes uh, on the second one, then uh, it's mm -hmm. it's definitive. It's affirmative. It's yeah. affirmative. It's insu uh, okay. insurance. Is this what we what assurance? Assurance. Yes. This this is mm -hmm. assurance. And it's like yes, like reassurance. We're reassuring. We're yes, reassuring like you here. We're making you thinking about okay. that Got maybe it. think about it, but now know it. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. bro God has brought you here. Okay. okay. You know, mm -hmm. think about it. You know? Like, is it possible? I I it's possible. It. What do you think? Mm -hmm. And then when we come, we're going to go uh, put a little bit more power. And then on the last uh, of the last, it's it's when we're okay. going to make sure that they know this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, so I want to make sure then we're addressing what you were saying then. So if to address the concern that you had. No, his concern was in the first place the first when, when, okay, when okay, Roberta okay, was yeah. singing. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Because he wanted her to sing a little louder. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. God. 
but God wants you smiling. And even if He comes dark as night, Christ will help you carry the weight of the cross. The world can even try. God wants you smiling, but God wants you smiling, but God wants you smiling. Okay, now let's go for the last one. Are you boys okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm good, I'm Every good. time we sing this one, I think <laughs> about the rope. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> oh, gosh. <coughs> <coughs> the blessing. We got to leave that one full. <coughs> so, robot. Oh, no. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Climb up the stairs. I start? Stay. No, oh, I start. okay. You go. You know what song I want us to do? Out of my head into the <laughs> real world, <laughs> here I, I go. go. <laughs> I wanted that song so bad. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that one.
rejoice and he is for you 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 coming back with us. Of course. That was great. My pleasure. That was good. <laughs> so I'll he's do that for you. now. He's yeah. for you. He's for you. He's it's just I like to do yeah. this this um, last amen again so we okay. can put the, yeah. Yeah. the power. Mm -hmm. So the he's for you, Marcel. Just he's for you? Yeah. Okay. We just do the he's for you. you. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. put your name in maestro now <laughs> we always call maestro because 